Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. Would you like to transform your kitchen without having to paint the cabinets? Well, today I have 12 quick and easy DIY project ideas to help you do just that. And they're all super budget friendly. In fact, I updated and furnished a kitchen belonging to my son's girlfriend, Amaya, and I did it all in just a few days for under $200. So if you'd like to see how I did that, let's get started. In nearly all kitchen transformation videos that I have watched, the DIYer paints the kitchen cabinets. But Amaya didn't want her cabinets painted, and I wanted to show you that you can completely transform your kitchen without painting your cabinets. I like to clean cabinets with a degreaser called Super Clean. I have it linked in my Amazon store, but it's also available in the automotive section of many stores. As I cleaned each cabinet, I replaced her silver knobs with black ones that had once been in my kitchen. These will go better with the backsplash I'm planning on installing. Another economical option is to spray paint your knobs. One of the quickest ways to transform your kitchen is to change out your backsplash. And there are so many options available today. There are products that can be applied over your existing backsplash or directly to the drywall. Either way, start cleaning your area really well with a good degreaser. Amaya had purchased some faux subway tiles from Dollar Tree. I cut out the half blocks so that I could line up the pattern of the tiles. Then I just peeled off the backing and stuck it to the wall. I just continued this process to cover the area just behind the stove. The tile was not meant to be cut up, but I felt it would look really fake if I didn't do so. However, as a result, some of the tiles were no longer completely attached to the adhesive backing. So I reattached them using a good adhesive. But honestly, I would recommend spending a little more money on a slightly better quality tile. For the rest of the backsplash, I used this peel and stick wallpaper in a pattern that Amaya liked. I purchased it at Lowe's and it comes in rolls that are only 18 inches wide which makes it a perfect size for applying between cabinets and countertops. The directions suggested aligning it with the countertop, but I found it easier to align it with the base of the cabinet. Once I had the top edge of the wallpaper aligned with the cabinets, I smoothed out the wrinkles using a plastic paint guide. I used an X-Acto knife to cut out around the outlets. Once I was confident that I had all of the wrinkles and air bubbles removed, I used the paint guide and an X-Acto knife to cut off the excess wallpaper along the bottom and sides. I decided to run a bead of caulk where the wallpaper met the countertop just to make sure that the wallpaper didn't peel up over time. Changing out your backsplash can drastically change the look of your kitchen, much like painting your cabinets. But putting up this backsplash only took me a couple of hours. Painting kitchen cabinets can take a couple days at the very least. When I was changing out the cabinet knobs, I noticed a couple doors that wouldn't quite shut. I tightened the screws on the hinges and that fixed one of the doors, but another door still would not stay shut, so I picked up a magnetic catch at the hardware store. It literally takes three minutes and a Phillips screwdriver and you have that annoying door fixed. 
Amaya did not like that her dishwasher was white and did not match her newer stainless steel range and refrigerator. I had thought about purchasing that contact paper that looks like stainless steel to cover the dishwasher, but then I decided to use something that Amaya already had on hand. She had purchased some wall tile stickers at Target to use for the backsplash, not realizing that they were intended to go over existing 4x4 tiles. After cleaning the dishwasher, I just began applying the individual stickers, cutting off the excess along the edges and bottom of the dishwasher with a pair of scissors. It's not for everybody, but I think it's a fun look that can easily be changed out. You may have noticed that Amaya has no furniture in her kitchen, although last week I did move a sofa table from her living room to the kitchen next to the basement stairwell. I thought she might have room for a small work table, and I found this one at the thrift store for $30. Using my orbital sander and 120 grit sandpaper, I sanded the top and sides down to the bare wood. I really liked the look of the natural wood and the white painted legs, but I knew that wouldn't go with Amaya's boho style. So I painted the legs with the dark kettle black paint that I had used in her living room in last week's video and I stained the wood top with the golden oak stain that I had also used in last week's projects. I had an old Ikea hanging rail that I wasn't using anymore, and so I attached it to the side of the table to provide more function. If you don't happen to live near an Ikea, Amazon sells similar models. I've linked one in my Amazon store that sells for $15. They come with S-hooks so that you can hang a variety of utensils or even pots and pans from them. Or you could create your own using an old curtain rod and a package of S-hooks. If you watched last week's living room makeover, you may have noticed that Amaya does not have a dining room table or chairs. And this is the $1,000 table that she likes. To replicate it, I purchased several 8-foot long furring strips and cut them into 30-inch lengths. I also purchased an 18-inch wood round, and I used it as a pattern to trace around and cut out a second 18-inch circle from a scrap of plywood. I began attaching one end of the furring strips to the plywood circle and soon realized that it would be easier if I had a middle support. So I found an old spindle in my wood pile and cut it to length, and then I nailed it first to the plywood circle and then to the center of the wood round. Once I had done this, it was much easier to nail the furring strips to the wood rounds at the top and the bottom. When I was nearly done, I centered the wood rounds on a wood tabletop that I had removed from an old thrifted coffee table. I reached in the opening and using my nail gun, I attached the wood round to the tabletop. I then finished attaching my furring strips to the opening. Unfortunately, I ended up with a very small opening left, so I hunted through my wood pile and found a scrap of molding that fit the opening perfectly, and I nailed that in place. I lightly sanded down the furring strips and the tabletop with 120 grit sandpaper, and then I applied golden oak stain to the furring strips so that it would match the wood in the rest of Amaya's house. I debated staining the wood tabletop, but ultimately I decided to paint it with dark kettle black paint because I liked the contrast of the black with the wood pedestal. 
I gave it two coats of the black paint, and when the paint was dry, I applied two coats of polyurethane to give it extra durability. I found two bent wood chairs for $5 each at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. The legs were silver, and so I gave them a couple coats of matte black spray paint. While the paint was drying on the legs, I cleaned up the seats using some leather conditioner on the black leather and orange glow on the wood. If you've never used Orange Glow before, I think you'll be surprised at how well it revives old, dried-out wood. Because I already had the round tabletop, I only spent $31 in supplies to build this table and $10 on the two bent wood chairs. And the pillows are ones that came with Amaya's living room sofa that she wasn't using anymore. I could have duplicated the look better if I had used half rounds instead of furring strips, but it would have cost about 10 times as much. The next update this kitchen needed was a new light fixture to go over that very modern kitchen table. I picked up this drum shade at the thrift store for a couple dollars. To give it more of a boho feel, I decided to hot glue on some black fringe that I had left over from another project. I switched off the circuit breaker to the kitchen light and removed her old fixture. Then I hooked up an inexpensive light kit from Amazon and attached the pendant to the light kit. Unfortunately, the electrical wiring from the ceiling is not centered over the table, so I needed to swag the cord using a hook in the ceiling. To update the other light fixture, I removed the glass globe. Then I adjusted the light sockets so that they would support the crossbars on a pendant light shade that had once been in my kitchen. I think it looks pretty good for free. I had noticed that Amaya keeps her curtains closed most of the time, so when I was thinking about her window treatments, I wanted to use something that would allow the light in but provide plenty of privacy. So I decided to install window film. I ordered a large roll from Amazon that looks like bamboo. It cost about $29. It was super quick and easy to install. I cut pieces to fit her window. It cut very easily with a pair of scissors. Then I got the window really wet using a sponge. I adhered the window film and then used a wallpaper smoothing tool to smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles. Because it looks like bamboo shades, I went three-fourths of the way down on the big picture window, but decided to cover the kitchen window entirely. I also used a hook in the ceiling to hang a plant to add extra interest to the kitchen window. If you saw last week's video, then you know that I painted a black accent wall in Amaya's living room. So I decided to do something similar in her kitchen. The previous owners had added this piece of plywood to a half wall that runs along the side of her refrigerator. I thought this would be the perfect place to add a pop of black. And if I'd had more time, I would have added some wood slats to this wall too to replicate the treatment that I did in the living room. Instead, I hung this piece of wood wall decor that Amaya had previously purchased at Big Lots. I love how the black and white here replicates the look of the backsplash. This kitchen, like a lot of kitchens, didn't have a lot of available wall space for art, but I wanted to take advantage of the little space that I had. To update this piece of thrifted wall art, I removed the metal leaf from its backing. Then, to remove the screws, 
I used pliers and just bent them back and forth until they snapped off. Then I gave the leaf a couple coats of matte black spray paint. To hang it on the wall, I just put a nail through the hole that was created when I snapped off the screw. To add a little art to the backsplash, I printed out these vintage butterfly images in muted colors and inserted them in some pretty wood thrifted picture frames. By focusing on a few key updates and using things that Amaya and I already had, I was able to update this kitchen for under $200 and in less time than it would have taken to paint the cabinets. I hope you found today's ideas and kitchen products helpful, and I'd love to know if you're going to try out any of these ideas in your own home. If you happen to miss last week's video where I made over Amaya's living room, I'll be sure to link that in the closing credits. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now.